Hey everyone, my name is Jethro and I believe that you can draw. I'm so excited because we're back this week with another drawing video. Uh, last week I was away, sorry there wasn't a video last week. Um, I was actually at the United, New Wines United 2022 conference, uh, which is a Christian conference. It's so much fun, I absolutely love it. Love getting to camp uh, there, but I was helping out with the kids work, so I was with 600 8 to 11 year olds and on one of the days I actually did a drawing workshop with 600 kids it was split over three sessions but that means I was doing a workshop with 200 kids at a time it was completely nuts and I can't believe I uh, that we pulled it off because I could not have done it without the team there um, yeah so a huge thank you so much goes out to all the team who helped me do a workshop for 200 kids. We all had pieces of paper with spots on and we drew characters together. We learned how to draw people and then some of them went on and drew animals as well. Um, and it was just so much fun. Every single child drew something incredible. Uh, and they're all just so happy just to, once I'd shown them the technique, like, like we do here in these videos, once I'd shown them the technique, they just went along and carried on drawing people, drew, they drew friends they knew, they drew ninjas, there was a ninja warrior theme <laughs> in the kids venue, um, and they drew animals, it was so much fun, and just wonderful to see them running with this technique, um, expressing the, their creativity, and just going for it. I love that. One of my favorite things about workshops in schools is that kids are so happy just to give things a go. They'll try something out and if they get it wrong, it doesn't matter. They'll just try again on another spot. I think we can do something similar today. <laughs> Let's draw some more characters. If you haven't um, seen any of my previous videos, you might not know what we're doing. I want to create a world. I'm inspired by the fantasy worlds of like Lord of the Rings, of uh, Breath of the Wild, <laughs> um, and those kind of fantasy worlds where it feels like you could go to any corner of them and talk to a character, like the smallest character, but it would feel like they have their own backstory. I want to create a world like that, but it's not going to happen on its own, so we're gonna do it together by drawing a new character every single week. I hope to make these videos weekly, last week being the exception, but here I am catching up. Um, we've already got three characters under our belt. We have Mira, who is here. Mira, I gave her a surname, Mira Harbour, uh, who was loyal, fierce, protective. She was one of the palace guards. Let's go back. Then we drew Cartho the next week. Cartho, the um, cartographer who was wild, detailed, and a little bit rebellious. Next, we had Elizabeth Dragon, who was not a dragon, but was the leader of the Bogona Dragons, a vigilante clan. Um, and uh, she likes to tell people that she was uh, abandoned in the forests of Anglethorn and raised by dragons there. They're troublemakers, but they have good intentions. Here we are for our fourth character. Eliza, who is an actual dragon. That's it, there are dragons in this world. Eliza is a dragon youth. She is curious, naive, and adventurous. Eliza lives with the other dragons in Anglethorn. And there's many of their traits, strong, courageous, protective of their family and of their home. Dragons are fiercely protective of their families. They form tight bonds with each other in order to build a little community that can keep themselves safe because there aren't many dragons and their clans do actually end up becoming very tight-knit communities that don't mix very well. Dragons can be a little bit aggressive but what sets Eliza apart is that she is curious. Not many dragons are curious and this leads her not only into adventures but also means that she's the one most likely to be spotted by outsiders which is troublesome. Gets her into a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, dragons of Angle Thorn have created so much mystery about them there just because they're rarely seen and Eliza puts that at risk. The elders don't like it. People of Ophir believe that, well some of them start to believe that dragons don't even exist. So that's the kind of rarity they've managed to create about themselves. Dragons are smart, they're not just beasts, they are smart. 
I'm here in Procreate. This is the exact same file that we've been working with for the last few weeks. I've got my other characters in there. But we don't need any of those. We want to create a brand new character. So I'm going to choose these colourful spots. Uh, make sure everything else is hidden. You can download this template. The link is in the description below. And I'm using Procreate on an iPad, but you don't have to. Creativity is in you. It's not in the app you use. Um, so I've got this layer of spots. I'm going to create a blank layer above it now. Um, which spot shall we start with? I like the shape of this one. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm working with the pencil that I like to use. And let's just start drawing. And when I'm drawing dragons, I start the same way I start everything else. <laughs> I start with the eyes. Uh, that's quite big. Let's put one there and one there and some little nostrils and then a mouth. Oh, for some reason, I'm gonna have to zoom in. I can't get the mouth right. There you go, not afraid to undo. Let's give it some little teeth. For she is a dragon. Eliza needs a body. Um, dragons in this world stand on two legs, or many of them do, stand on two legs and they've got wings as well coming out the back. That's the kind of dragon shape we're going for. So let's give her, her body will be around there-ish. Just gonna grab the selection tool, move her body underneath, because I think I want it to come there, and a tail will come out like that. She is small, she is a dragon youth. Dragons can be... Well, they could, some of them can tower over your house, let alone yourself. I'm not quite happy with that. I'm going to take this. Swipe with three fingers down to get my cut, copy and paste menu. Cut and paste that out. Reduce the opacity of it. And then go back to our actual drawing layer. And I just want to try out a few different, I think that's the curve I like. If as you're drawing, you're like, why is he drawing? So many different curves. They all look pretty much the same to me. Don't worry. It's just through practice that I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of shape I like. I don't like that shape either. One thing I love about Procreate that I thought was annoying at first, you know, in other apps, if you push something off the edge of the canvas, it's still there, it still exists. But in Procreate, when you push something off the edge of the canvas and you exit move mode, it gets completely deleted. <laughs> but I find that really useful because you know, if you don't something like something, just quickly select it, push it off, flick it off, and um, it's gone. I think what needs to happen is that she needs to be more upright. Having taken half a moment just to just to look again, is that her body actually needs to be there? That, I think, is looking better. It's not perfect. Let's squidge it around a bit with Liquify. But it is. Nearly there. Okay, well, we'll move on. Let's give her some legs. And some little hands and then the stubby little wings. Stubby little wing number one, stubby little wing number two, and then some small little spiral horns. Don't like it. <laughs> Don't like it. Um, let's try another one. Gonna reduce the opacity of that, just so I've got it there. Let's try another one. Perhaps I, 
Yeah, okay, well, let's just, let's just start again. More eyes, another mouth, I was pretty happy with that. Little horns. Shorter, being a youth. I think what might have actually been the issue Maybe her body was just too big. Chunky tail. This might be it actually. And then big strong legs. Big feet. Yes. I think this is better. It's one of the reasons I start with the red pencil, so I can just try things out, and because I know that sometimes I'm not going to be happy with what I've drawn. Uh, I'm going to move her eye a bit closer. Oh, I forgot her nostrils up there. Eliza also needs some wings, so let's add those in. And another wing just there. And I think what I actually like is probably something halfway between the two. So let's take this body, select it, and we'll just scale it up a fraction. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Okay, time to add the lines. Let's grab um, black and my pen. Take the opacity down and we'll just start. Oh, that is too small. And that's probably too thick. Somewhere in between. Somewhere in between. I love that these spots are just work so well for um, people and for characters. I think one of the one of the fantastic things about having a page of spots as your start is that it's just less scary. <laughs> like looking at a blank page is often like a really scary place to start. You're like, okay, well I have a vision for something, but where do I start? But you know, if the page has already got something on it. You can't mess it up. You can't go. You can't go wrong. There's already something on the page, uh, and I don't know. For some reason, I think that just unlocks a bit of creativity in us. Helps us to um, just make a make a start. And I'm not sure. That's been my experience anyway. Especially doing kids workshops and the way that they all do something incredible. Like not a single kid doesn't draw something. Absolutely love it. Okay, dragons have got quite chunky legs for stomping around, scratching in the in the ground or climbing things. Dragons are just adept in everything, I think. <laughs> they are some of the most feared, fearsome creatures because they are intelligent and they have all the tools they need to um, you know, carry out their schemes. Uh, breathing fire, can fly, can climb, uh, unbelievably strong, <laughs> slightly magical in a way that you know, the ordinary uh, citizens of Ophir are not. Um, and I think one of the greatest things that this clan of dragons has been able to do is actually hide itself. We will come back to the wings. For now, let's add some colour. That means getting the waxy crayon brush, popping off the colour palette, and Eliza is gonna be purple. Her head is blue, 
Why or not, we will fix that soon. Oh, it's complaining at me because I'm trying to draw a hidden layer, add a new layer underneath my inky lines. Let's lay down a, a purple base color. I don't like this purple, but that doesn't matter. I just want to get a base layer down so that we've got something to work with. Um, let's turn on alpha lock so that I can then come in, change the color of it. That is too vibrant, but is a better hue. There's good shadow. Where's the middle color? That is getting close. Yeah, there's a color I like. There's a color I like. Okay, let's put something really dark underneath. Dragons are born all different colors, and it's got nothing to do with genetics. Probably has something to do with the temperature of the season in which they were born as to how their skin color sets. Um, they cannot change their color though. Oh, that's really nice, that kind of blue. I like that, I'm gonna let that just follow in. But it does mean that within a single clan, you'll find people, you'll find dragons that are red. You'll find dragons that are blue, that are green, that are every shade of gold. Absolutely everything. Right. Just putting on some other colors in here for more shading. Maybe a, like a deep red there towards the end of the tail. Oh, let's make her tail glow a little. I like that. She will get, oh, oh, I wasn't. I'm gonna make the tail go pink. Yes, the tail will go pink. I'm just adding some, and now I'm kind of making this up as I go along, but I'm gonna add some roughness with this nice light purple. So it's not specifically scales, it's not specifically just like a tough skin, but there is texture in there. And then the tip of her tail will be, and this is how you can tell a junior dragon. Some of them grow pretty quick, not Eliza, she is small, but a junior dragon their tail will be slightly translucent. And that is what Eliza's is. You've got that translucent pinkish glow tinge to it. So let's pull in some of that color. Push the pink in. Some of that white highlight. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Had to take a brief break there because my primary camera overheated. Very sad, but no worries. Okay, I'm gonna add another layer. Clip this to, uh, when you have a stack of clipped layers, um, and clipping is where, it's a bit like alpha lock, but works over multiple layers. So if I draw this layer is clipped to um, this layer, here. So anything I draw that's outside of uh, where this layer's got color on it, 
uh, it means that nothing is going to appear. Oh, it's better if I show you. And you can stack loads of layers, and they'll all clip to the base one. Um, so this one is going to be stripes. So if I take like a blue, I can paint over here and nothing is going to happen. You can see there is paint there, um, but nothing's going to show until I cross over, which is just really, really handy. Um, let's clear that layer. I thought there was a... Yeah. If you take three fingers, I don't use this very often, take three fingers and swipe them from side to side, it'll clear whatever is on your current layer. Uh, let's, let's do it with the blue. Let's do it with the blue. We can always change the colour later. Give us some stripes along her belly. I think I am going to change it. Might go classic Spyro and just make it yellow, but no. All red, even. All the way down her tail. Uh, to change the colour, I'm going to alpha lock them and let's pick some kind of... Maybe I will pick that, that pinky colour, actually. I think that works best, to be honest. Let's shade them as well. And the closer they get to the tail, the, the more purpley they are. Yeah, cool. Okay, I like that. Just hints of yellow coming through. <laughs> Great. Now we need to do the wings. Let's add a new layer. It's below the ink, which is perfect. Let's take our deepest, darkest purple and pull out a wing and, we'll... and then just I'm going to build up in layers some feathers Eliza was very young for age when she first learned to fly which made her the pride of her dragon community but, as she's been able to explore from a young age, that is probably where she got lots of her curiosity from. And that is not the pride of the dragon community. For if she is curious, she might get spotted. And she is constantly being dragged back to the nest and lectured about why. She cannot stray too close to her fear. For humans keep seeing the wisp of her tail, the pink glow at night. And the people of Ophir, they f they know the dragons are there. Well, the legends tell of dragons. So they know there are legends of dragons in the forest, but the dragon clan have worked very hard to make sure that people just think they are myths and legends. For they do not want the people of Ophir to come and hunt them and cause disturbances. For they do not get on. People fear the dragons. And uh, the elders still remember the days of... Well, the elders didn't grow up in Anglethorn, the forest next to Ophir. They came from a... they travelled from a far-off land where they were once ousted from their home by people. That is why they came to this land to settle and not to escape other violent and warring dragon clans. That is why they want to keep a low profile. Great. I think pretty happy with that one. Let's create another wing underneath. And then I'm just going to constantly be using the colour picker to 
pull colors from the other wing. I love the color picker. I love using it because with this crayon brush it kind of it smudges and pushes color around so it's helpful for me to be able to like rather than try and work out you know what what was halfway in between the purple and the red uh, I could just use a color picker and pick it and just I can mix colors on the canvas and then just start using them straight away which is very nice very handy okay I think Eliza's wings are nearly done Oops, I keep accidentally dismissing the colour picker with the palm of my hand. I'm just going to clip a new layer to just this wing and then with a nice big dark purple brush I can paint in a shadow of sorts and then set that to colour burn maybe, linear burn, darker colour. I might have to go like deep red. No, I don't like that colour. I think that helps to separate them. Let's hide the pencil lines because we don't need them anymore. Eliza's nearly there, but her head is the wrong colour. <laughs> so let's take the spot layer with the selection tool, draw it around her head swipe down to get duplicate and then we'll grab the magic wand hue saturation and slide that to about there I think yeah I'm pretty trying to dial it in I think I'm pretty happy with that I do want to add an extra layer of shadow because I don't think I've made her tail quite dark enough Once again, I'm just going to hit the layer mode on this and maybe change it to darker color. Multiply. Yeah, I think that is just perfect. And I think that gives us one happy Eliza. Which means it's time to name her. And that means I need my writing pen, which is the same as my normal inking pen, but the stabilization has been turned up on it so that it's slightly easier to write with. Oops. Eliza. is curious. 
naive, and I need to check the spelling of this word. And adventurous. I think all excellent qualities and perfectly understandable qualities for a dragon youth. Adventurous. Tap, 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 tap. Leave that there. Let's hide our spots. Stick that in the middle. Is there anything on that layer? No, that layer is empty. And swipe all of these ones. Group them. And now we can move Eliza into place, where she can proudly stand as a perfect addition to our characters in No Fear. Thank you so much for drawing with me today. I love drawing, I love getting to create characters. Uh, if you drew something, please do send it to me. I'd love to see what you've made um, and maybe share that. If you'll let me, I'd love to share your drawings. You can contact me on Instagram and Twitter with at Jethro Wilson. You can contact me on email, which is hello at Jethro Wilson. Don't forget all the templates and files and everything you need if you want to be following along. Following along if you want to be following along uh, on Procreate, all those links are in the description below. And I have a monthly newsletter. I'm currently putting together the August newsletter. Um, so if you don't want to miss that, then sign up in the description below. I might have already sent it by the time you read this, in which case I'll put a link to the August newsletter um, in the description below. But still sign up so that you don't miss September's one. <laughs> Thank you so much for drawing with me. It's so much fun to be creative together. I can't wait to see what you've made and have a wonderful day.